Right. For more on the debt ceiling negotiations and the impact on markets, we want to bring in Libby Cantrell, who is head of U.S. public policy at PIMCO. And, and Libby, what do you think? <laughs> You're watching this in Washington, kind of yeah. wondering what's happening. How do you handicap this? Do you tell people that you think a debt default might actually happen this time? Or do you think this is a replay of we're going to yeah. deal with well, it? Yeah, it's definitely, it's clear as mud, productive, but not, <laughs> not, 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 not progress necessarily. I mean, I mean, so this is the number one issue for our clients. I mean, we're all hearing this from our clients. Um, yeah, we've been constructive in terms of folks actually reaching a deal before the X date. We just think that, um, while well, Kayla's absolutely right, there's no political incentive to compromise before you absolutely have to. Uh, there's also no political incentive to default. Nobody, it's in no one's interest uh, to see us breach uh, the X date. So we remain constructive. We think there's the contours of the deal exist. It's just a question of filling in the details. And the details are sort of mind-numbing, I think, for kind of the markets. It's what baseline they're going to be using, the depth of these spending caps, how, you do, how much do you slow uh, future growth. They're actually important from an economic perspective. Um, but I, we think we're, you know, we remain confident that they'll be able to get there and, and be able to get there before the X date. Now, there's also the possibility that they have a short-term deal we're just a short-term extension for the next two weeks because, of course, the Senate's on recess right now and the House is supposed to be in recess next week. Um, but we remain constructive. But we, ha we have to start you know, seeing these details be filled in because we do think the market's going to start reacting if, if, uh, if they don't. Yeah, McCarthy, I think, is of the opinion that he is not bringing something to the floor that he can't pass with a majority of his caucus signing off on it, somewhere from half to two-thirds maybe signing off on that. Right. How tricky is that? Is that's, I mean, that seems like it's going to be the hard nut, is getting something the White House would agree to that also half to two-thirds of the Republican caucus would agree to. Right, and then presumably you have to get Democrats on board as well in the House, right? right. So well, you, you probably don't need that many of them. You don't need that you many, need but you still need help. some, right? So you need to provide cover to the Democrats. You need to provide cover to those moderate Republicans to vote for it. And then, of course, you need to provide uh, cover to the, to the White House. And this is why I think it's actually helpful that they're saying we're narrowing the, the scope of the negotiations. We're not going to be talking about immigration reform or tax increases, because those are both non-starters for each of the respective caucuses. So this is sort of, you know, they're going to be kind of threading the needle here, if you will. Um, we remain confident that they're going to be able to do it. And we think once there is a deal in principle, that folks will fall in line. Everyone understands that this is something that they just can't. This is kind of the, the stove that they realize is hot and they don't want to touch. Uh, so I think they're, they all realize that they need to get this done. So what's the actionable advice here? I mean, if, if, if it's the top question you're getting from yeah. people, it doesn't seem like it's had a huge impact on the equity markets to this point. Not the equity markets. Now, of course, as you pointed out, the, tr the bills market has very much been dis dislocated, right? So you saw the auction yesterday at 545. Uh, on, the, on, the, on the three months. Um, so we are sort of seeing some dislocation again, the front end of the yield curve. But broadly speaking, the equity market has been you know, pretty sanguine, I think pretty constructive that they will reach a deal. Um, I would say that if we don't see something in principle by in the next, say, 48 hours, People should, <laughs> people should also then just assume that there's going to be a short-term deal. And so that means that this sort of uncertainty will at least last for the An next few weeks. An extension for a week or two. An extension for, yeah, a week or two, maybe a month. But we, probably, we think it's probably more weeks, not months. Um, so I think if you don't see a deal in principle in the next, say, 48, 72 hours, then we might, likely, we might see a, see a short-term increase. And I think you probably would see... Is that a reason to sell the market? You know, or again, you I think, think it's that ultimately a deal. Do you just ignore all? Well, and I, you know, we're you know we're, we have the benefit of being long-term investors, so we we're doing some, something tactically, but for the most part, there's nothing, no big strategic shifts in our portfolio. Would you buy this. if you did see a sell-off? Uh, well, you know, I think we have concerns about just the slowing economy and sort of some of the fundamentals, um, you know, going into the sort of the second half of this year. So from our perspective, I'm not sure it would be it would necessarily be a buy, but again, we're not necessarily shifting any sort of portfolios as it, as it is right now either. Is there anywhere in your scenario where the U.S. gets downgraded, even if we don't hit that X date? Because we could get downgraded. Fitch has said that we could downgrade the yep. U.S. because of, you know, dysfunction in the government, which yeah. we see in spades, <laughs> really. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, you know, what we saw, of course, in 2011 was that there was a downgrade and that did, um, you know, spur the partly the sell off. There was right. also the European debt crisis and there was also big budget cuts. So I think people were worried about the recession. However, in 2013, 
when we also didn't see a deal until the day before the exit. I don't think people remember that. We had 2011, and then we also had a 2013 episode. 2013 episodes sort of have been a repeat of this, where there's just been these sort of languishing uh, negotiations and what have you, but there was no downgrade. Moody's, I, think, I believe, has come out, say that they're not necessarily going to downgrade in advance of the exit, mm -hmm. but of course, if we do breach it, then um, everything's on the table. And I do think, you know, I mean, we, we don't mean to be sanguine about sort of the implications of a breach. We think that it would be... Um, you know, I mean, people have used catastrophic. That might seem hyperbolic, but it, it, we, you know, we think it could be.